Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about... Have you ever seen one of these before? Check it out, it's really weird. It's kind of impossible. If you look at it closely, you see what I'm talking about here? It doesn't make any sense. This thing is made with only one playing card using no glue and it looks really weird and quite impossible. At any rate, stay tuned later in this video after the reaction, I'm going to tell you something about this. But for right now, let's proceed with the purpose of this video, which is a reaction to Keith Kahn, an American mentalist. And that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into the reaction. With mentalism, there's two types of audience members. There's skeptics and then there's believers. Some of the believers can be really intense. I get phone calls in the middle of the night from fans who say they hear voices in their heads and they know I'll understand. I like to let people decide for themselves. A few years ago, I did a corporate gig in India, and the hotel staff found out that I do metal bending. I did three quick metal bending effects. People started calling me Jadugar, which I later found out means sorcerer. Hmm. So actually, there's quite a discussion and a debate in the magic community about this type of mentalism. On the one hand, some people say that it's really immoral to fool the audience into such a point of believing that you really have superpowers. Because if you do so, then maybe you're negatively influencing their life. Like you're, you're allowing them to have these beliefs about these things that are impossible, but they think it is possible. So it affects their worldview and potentially then they can make bad choices. But on the other side, you have people say, well, like, that's the purpose of this, you know? You know, like we're supposed to give them an impactful magical feeling and some mentalists also say well they use it for the purpose of good you know to encourage these people in positive ways in fact for example I've heard before they'll say like someone wants to hear something about their dead relative and the mentalist will say ah oh, they're happy they're at peace so you don't need to worry about that anymore anyways it's kind of a fierce debate in the magic community and I just wanted to present you with both sides of the argument I'm not gonna give my personal opinion about that but I just thought maybe you'd find it interesting so back to the video I feel great about coming in front of Penn and Teller because even though they're really skeptical when it comes to mentalism, I believe that Penn and Teller want to be fooled. There's an old phrase in mentalism. I'd like to get it tattooed on my arm. The world wants to be deceived. Everyone wants that sense of wonder and Penn and Teller are no different. Give it up for Keith Kong! I brought a gift tonight because I've been a fan of Penn & Teller for a very long time. Actually, that's not true. I'm really just a big fan of Penn. I like that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Nothing against you, Teller, but tonight this gift really is just for Penn. I like how Penn just goes for it. He's like, I've got no problem with that. <laughs> Teller's all dejected and Penn's like, right on. <laughs> okay. But that's because he's going to earn it by singing a song. Are you ready to sing for us, Pat? I certainly am. That's fantastic, and to help you out with that, I brought a list full of songs that most people know the words to. Okay. Can we grab a close-up of this list and put it up on the monitor for everyone to see? We'll just go ahead and pause that so we get a good look at the list also. Mary Had a Little Lamb, Jack and Jill, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Jingle Bells. Yep, it seems like a pretty legitimate list of songs. By the way, I'm excited to hear Penn sing. I think this could be amazing, especially since his voice has sounded a little off in the last few episodes. I don't know if he's got a cold or what, but it'll be amazing to hear him sing. Let's do this. Perfect. And Allison, will you join me over here, please? Because you are going to decide which song Penn is going to sing. Yeah, I thought you were going to make me sing, and that was not going to be fun. <laughs> Allison. Yes. I want you to take a moment to look over the list and circle any song, but make sure it's a song that you think Penn would know all of the words to. By the way, I just want to pause and tell you something I'm thinking about right now. It's completely not really related to the Magic Act, but the way Allison responded to thinking that he was asking her to sing versus the way that Pin responded, it's polar opposites. As soon as Pin heard that, he's like, yeah, I'll do that. Whereas Allison's like, oh, you know, like most people, they wouldn't want to be singing in front of an audience if they're not a professional singer. I think most of us can relate to Allison's point of view but I really do admire the way Penn responded. You know, his response is one that comes from a huge inner self-confidence. He is not afraid to make a fool of himself. And perhaps that's part of his charm, part of his character, part of why people like him. Anyways, I was just thinking, uh, you know, there's no right and wrong here, but uh, my preference would personally, I want to be more like how Penn is. I try to be more fearless in my life if I can. What about you? Leave a comment below. Back to the video. <laughs> 
Desolation Row. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. No hesitation. She just picked one right away. Wow. Allison chose Old McDonald. And Allison, you could have chosen any song on this list. You could have chosen Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, couldn't you have? Could have. And I'm sure you know the words to that, right, Penn? I do, I do. I'm sure you know the words to a lot of songs on this list. Songs like Happy Birthday. I uh, guess. Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yes. Or uh, The Star Spangled Banner. Yes. But of all the songs you could have picked, Allison, you picked Old McDonald. Do you know what's crazy about that? Penn's already sang that song on this show. Isn't that right, Penn? And not that I remember. Wait, you're telling me that you don't remember singing Old MacDonald on this show? I don't remember that, no. But the third season was a blur. <laughs> <laughs> I know Pin has this, like, uh, this podcast called, like, Pin's Sunday School, and I haven't really listened to a lot of it because they're very long episodes and there's a lot of them. But even though he was joking about that, he said season three was a blur, I wonder if there was some half-truth to that? Was that, like, some super hectic time of his life and it really was, like, a blur? Am I reading too deep into this? Did it make you curious when you heard that? It made me curious. Anyway, back to the video. Well, I've watched every single episode of this show, and I brought a clip to share with everyone tonight, and it's of you, Penn. Really? Watch this. Old Mac had a farm, E, E, O. <laughs> and on that farm, he had a chicken, E, E, O. But the clock, clock here, and the clock, <laughs> clock there. Here, clock, there, clock, everywhere, a clock, clock, old Mac Moore had a farm, E, E, O. <laughs> that sounded pretty legit. I wonder if they, like, uh, corrected the pitch of his voice to make it sound continuous like that. They must have, I guess. Wow, Ben. With all of that hard work, I think you've earned this gift. But it's not just any gift. It's a very special gift to remind you that of all the songs Allison could have chosen, she chose a very specific song. You see, Penn, I made you your very own platinum record. And engraved on the plaque are the words, Penn Jillette's Old MacDonald. <laughs> that is a gift for you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Look at this. Look at that. So uh, what made you come up with that idea? Well, you know, I've been a fan of the show for so long, and I've seen these videos online of, of people singing and stuff like that. My first choice was Teller, but I didn't think that would work out. <laughs> so, you definitely would have gotten it not, uh, right if you picked, like, Silent Night. Yeah. <laughs> can, we, can we see the list? This list? The list of songs? I think we can allow that, yeah. OK, thank you. This is interesting. Oh. Does that make you more nervous? It does not. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Makes me nervous, and it's not my trick. All right, well, good. Maybe they want to see what other songs they could have picked. Yeah. So what did you do before you became a professional magician? I started performing on my 11th birthday, so it's been pretty much this the whole time. Most kids have an entertainer come to their party. I was the kid entertaining at the party. Wow. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if you hit the right notes and fooled the boys. Right. Let me go ahead and give you my thoughts before we hear from Penn and Teller. Okay, here are my thoughts. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they gave out that frame at the end so they could totally examine it, and, you know, if there was some way to switch out the answer on the bottom, they would have been able to, to see that. You would think, unless it's like uh, the answer gets chosen and it's like permanently set in there and they wouldn't even be able to know. Hmm. Hmm, that would be kind of cool to devise a device uh, where it would be able to change to the right result, like with some kind of mechanism inside, but then give it away and the person who received it kept it on, even on their wall and never knew that that mechanism was built inside. That seems like a cool idea. I don't know, I doubt that's what's happening here, but um, it seemed like a pretty free selection for Allison. I mean, she just literally walked up there and circled the song, right? Huh. I am struggling with this one. I mean, I was even kind of thinking like maybe the ink on the paper could change, you know, if there was heat applied, it could switch. So she circled one and it changed to the other one. But that's ridiculous because she saw what she was circling and she would know if it had changed. So yeah, I don't know how this worked. Let's hear what Penn and Teller had to say. Keith, Keith, uh, I liked me singing. It was good. <laughs> I liked me singing when I have to work at all. I'll tell you, 
well, there's one way you could have gotten that trophy instantly, and that is if you would have gotten rights to all the Dylan catalog so that I could have sung any Bob Dylan song, <laughs> that trophy would have come down right away. But as it is, we're lo looking at this and we're going, you know, uh, we, uh, we kind of know a lot of what the audience knows. We kind of know that although Allison thinks and acted like she had a completely free choice, we don't think that that could be possible. We think that there must be what magicians call a force, some sort of force. We don't know what that force is. You fooled us. <gasps> All right, well, let me give you my concluding thoughts. Attention Walmart shoppers! If you watch Keith's Fool Us video over on his YouTube channel, you'll notice something is a little different. Something a little bit towards the end of the video. So if you like hidden Easter eggs, maybe go check that out. Just saying. Link in the description below. So congratulations to Keith Kong for fooling Penn and Teller, and for fooling me. I don't know how I did it. Uh, so they confirmed, or at least their suspicion was that Allison was forced to choose that. It's interesting the wording they chose. They said that Allison was acting like and believing that she had the free choice. So that almost makes me think about like the concept of pre-show work, where you essentially talk to the person ahead of time, show them some kind of magic trick, give them a free choice, and they're supposed to remember their choice. So when the show rolls, then they're going to make that same choice. But it's engineered so that they don't feel like they're being forced to do it, like they feel like that was a free selection there. Anyways, th there's ways of doing that kind of stuff, and I think that kind of thing is a lot more common on America's Got Talent. I don't really think they allow stuff like that on Fool Us, though, so I guess that wasn't how he did it. I don't know. I'm at a loss. What did you think? Leave a comment below. How do you think this was accomplished? Or you don't even need to talk about method. You can just say if you enjoyed the presentation. I thought it was a funny idea. You know, as far as the computer animated part of Pin singing the song, one could imagine that he had constructed, you know, 15 other versions of that as well, singing the other songs. It would be a lot of work, but magicians are known to do this type of thing. But when he revealed the plaque and gave it to Penn and Teller, it doesn't really seem like that answer could have been changed. Like that was always going to be the end result. I don't know. So leave a comment below. Oh, and one more thing is I've got to say, I was a little disappointed that we didn't get to hear Penn singing. I would have loved to hear Penn, you know, croaking out this song. That would have been amazing. Or who knows, maybe he has a wonderful voice. Have we ever heard Penn sing? before? I don't think so. Oh, and by the way, you remember at the beginning of this video when I was talking about this impossible card? If you want to learn how to do this yourself, I made a tutorial on my Patreon. So you can make one of these easily. You can leave it on your desk at the office and confuse colleagues and coworkers alike because there's literally no difference between the two of them. Anyway, just go to Google, type Jason Parker Patreon or look in the pinned comment below. I'll put a link to my Patreon there and you can find the tutorial and make one of these very quickly and you'll be simultaneously supporting this channel so I can continue making videos. And lastly, the Aesop's fable portion of the video. Let's select one randomly this time. Okay, I'm seeing a very interesting picture here, which looks like it continues from the page before. Interesting. So this picture actually has two illustrations. You got the gnat and the lion on this page, and then over here you have a spider and a gnat. So really this story should be called the lion, the gnat, and the spider, right? What's going on, Aesop? Where's the consistency? Okay, chapter 248, the gnat and the lion. A gnat once went up to a lion and said, I am not the least afraid of you. I don't even allow that you are a match for me in strength. What does your strength amount to after all? That you can scratch with your claws and bite with your teeth? Just like a woman in a timber. And nothing more. But I'm stronger than you. If you don't believe it, let us fight and see. So saying, the gnat sounded his horn and darted in and bit the lion on the nose. When the lion felt the sting in his haste to crush him, he scratched his nose badly and made it bleed but failed altogether to hurt the gnat, which buzzed off in triumph, elated by its victory. Presently, however, it got entangled in a spider's web and was caught and eaten by the spider, thus falling prey to an insignificant insect after having triumphed over the king of the beasts. <laughs> well, the one thing that stands out to me is this, uh, this remark about women. It seems rather insulting. Let's read that line again because that's pretty politically incorrect in today's day and age. That you can scratch with your claws and bite with your teeth just like a woman in a temper 
and nothing more. Aesop's words, not mine. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. I'm sure there's an Aesop's fable for that too. Anyway, that was kind of funny because you would definitely never see anything like that nowadays. So that's kind of a cool story, actually. I have to admit, uh, this gnat is so proud that he's, you know, like, better and stronger than the king of the beasts, the king of the jungle. You know, but he's so full of himself and so triumphant, he accidentally buzzes right into a spider's web and then is eaten by the spider. A lowly spider. The anti-king of the jungle. So that's a pretty clear story there. I think we're saying don't let your head get so full of hot air that you float up into the stratosphere and suffocate. You know, pride goeth before a fall. Boom! Bah! Nailed it. Anything else hidden in here? Yeah, the lion didn't really play a significant part except for being this, you know, strong adversary. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear and I think we've interpreted it successfully. Oh my lord, that was totally unexpected. All right, that's the last reaction of the night and now I get to order my Domino's pizza because it's Domino's pizza Tuesday night deal. Night. Okay, I've got nothing else. I'm tired and hungry. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll just... Uh... <laughs> Call it a night. How about you? Are you gonna call it a night? Or is it morning where you are? I'm literally out of comments, so I should just end this video. Hope you're having a great week, great day, and I'll see you next time.